Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Martha Booker Johnson and I am the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation or ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. Today's speakers are Michael Karani and Tyler Evans Tokarik. Michael is a lecturer at the Center for Communication Studies, University of Dar es Salaam. Michael teaches linguistics and communication studies, and his research interests include Maasai linguistics and writing studies. Michael has published in the Ita Italian Journal of Linguistics, Open Linguistics, Wuch Papers in Pragmatics, Stellenbosch Papers in Linguistics Plus, Asian and African Studies, and Studia Linguistica Universitatis Jagiellonicae Cracoviensis. Uh, Tyler is a professor teaching stream at the University of Toronto, where he is currently the acting director of the Institute for the Study of University Pedagogy. He teaches courses in writing studies and university transition, consults one-on-one -on -one with students on their writing, and coordinates a university-wide writing support program. His current research interests include writing transfer, writing assessment, university transition, writing across the curriculum, and discourse analysis. Tyler has published in academic journals, including the Journal of the First Year Experience and Students in Transition, Discourse and Writing, the Canadian Journal for the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, the International Journal for the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, Across the Disciplines, and the Journal of College Student Retention. Please join me in welcoming Michael and Tyler as they give their talk, Measuring Transfer from First Year Communication Skills Courses, a Longitudinal Mixed Methods Study at the University of Dar es Salaam. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you, Martha, for an interesting introduction. Um, welcome to our talk. Our talk is about measuring writing um, and skills transfer from the first year communication skills course um, for engineering students. Um, this is part of a longitudinal research project, which is a larger project uh, conducted here at the University of Dar es Salaam. Uh, maybe I should say that this is a little bit different from what we do here in the Rift Valley Network, but uh, as we all know, or most of us know, that in African universities, the linguistics or languages department always work with communication skills or uh, academic writing or professional English uh, in many universities. So, um, Professor Taylor Tokarik is my collaborator. We are both here at the University of Dar es Salaam, at least he is here for a month. Um, and I would like to share um, the preliminary findings of our study. So I'll begin with the definition of writing transfer. And we're using the definition provided by the Elon Research Seminar in 2015, which as you can see, reads the phenomenon in which new and unfamiliar writing tasks are approached through the application, remixing or integration of previous knowledge, skills, strategies, and dispositions. <clears throat> so we are looking at whether students take that knowledge that they acquire, the skills that they acquire in a first year course and use them in some substantive manner in subsequent courses that they take over the next three years of their studies. And we are indeed looking at a one year beyond graduation as well, interviewing, surveying, and uh, talking to students, collecting samples of their writing for a year after they graduate to determine whether this writing transfer is happening. Mm -hmm. So there's, a substantial body of research on writing transfer, uh, most of it conducted in the United States. So we are uh, testing whether my, many of these theories uh, transfer <laughs> in a different kind of a way to the African context. And much of that research suggests that students often transfer little or sometimes somewhat depressingly, none of the knowledge and skills that they have acquired in that first year course to other contexts. Uh, more recent research suggests that transfer is typically possible but requires very specific conditions for this to happen. And uh, so this leads many researchers and university administrators to wonder whether uh, these kinds of courses, which are my understanding, uh, in my understanding, close to universal at American universities and certainly very common in North America, are not the best use of limited resources. And we have a bibliography as well. Uh, some of the scholarship that suggests that transfers um, as mixed results are listed on the screen here. Put simply, our research question for this subset of the five-year longitudinal study is, 
What skills and knowledge do students transfer from a first year communication skills course to other engineering courses at UDSM? The literature suggests that there are typically four obstacles to writing transfer or skills transfer more generally. And we've designed our research to uh, enable us to investigate whether these obstacles are in fact in place. And that will of course help us to redesign the course or redesign the curriculum to remove said obstacles. The first is the curriculum that's typically in a first year composition course. Now we are dealing with communication skills courses here, not first year comp, but uh, we think that the, uh, the similarities are significant enough that they warrant this approach. Um, the first year composition curriculum, like the communication skills courses here at UDSM, are quite isolated from other disciplines and not socially situated, at least in terms of the writing that students typically do in those courses. They're not writing about something that they went to university to study. And so they're not invested in it. As a function of the curriculum, there's very often little to no alignment between those first year composition courses and other courses that students end up taking. This alignment can be seen or misalignment can be seen in the kinds of assignments students do, the expectations professors have of the students and the expectations students have of their professors and the kinds of opportunities for writing or using those skills that are taught in the first year course. Students' perception of the course, as many of us know, um, even if you don't teach these students in that context, you certainly know the reputation that those courses have on campus. And that reputation is that they're very artificial. They're contrived institutional requirements in the eyes of the students. And because of this, students don't look for opportunities for transfer down the road in second or third year. And of course, the pedagogy that's employed in these courses. Um, we now know that there are ways to explicitly teach for transfer so that you can cue uh, transfer uh, down the road in second or third year courses, but most instructors um, aren't doing this or many are not doing it. And uh, that, is cause for concern. Okay, so um, the rationale for this international collaboration will actually uh, help us to use data from East Africa to test American theories of writing um, and skills transfer, uh, but also um, help us to apply American theories of writing um, and skills transfer to very different contexts. And by context, we mean, uh, by different contexts, we mean students from different culture, uh, different language history and different education system. Uh, but also this will create a dialogue between different parts of the world, um, uh, expand our understanding of writing and skills and instruction and transfer. Uh, it may also challenge established understanding of writing and skills transfer. Now let's have a short profile of University of Dar es Salaam. Um, this is the oldest university. Uh, it was established in 1961. Um, with current figures, uh, it shows that 39,000 students are registered, um, having 14,000 upcoming students each year. It's an English medium um, university. And, you know, uh, many students speak English as the third language after their local languages and Swahili as a national language as well. And Swahili is language of instruction in public schools for at least for the first nine years. Uh, English is supposed to be taught, um, supposed to be, to be the language of instruction in secondary schools, but this is not always the case. Uh, you know, teachers use code switching and Swahili sometimes. Uh, private schools use English uh, as a medium of instruction from pre-primary to high school. Uh, now let's have a, have a picture of our larger project. Um, it includes three courses. Um, offered to different uh, disciplines. Uh, and it's a, it's a longitudinal study that will last for five years in which we have pre and post interviews with communication skills instructors, about 24 of them. We also have annual surveys of students. Um, we started last year um, and we continue this year as well. And it, it, with these three courses, we have about 6,000 students taking these courses. Uh, we also have annual interviews with the students. Um, we have started doing uh, interviews with students and we have about 20 students at least for now. Uh, we collect um, writing samples from these students and analyze. Uh, we also 
uh, carry out interviews with content area instructors, those who teach in different disciplines apart from communication. And lastly, we have annual collection and analysis of writing assignments and the grades from content um, um, area instructors. Um, the survey covers um, different questions, about 50 of them, um, inquiry information on writing history, self-assessment of writing proficiency, self-efficacy uh, among students, expectations about writing at university, their perceptions of communication skill courses and their demographics uh, or demographic information. Okay, and we have, um, we have carried out an online survey uh, in which we had a rough off a laptop and you can see in some pictures here, um, some students receiving their prizes, a laptop prize for participating in the survey. Uh, however, we had very low um, the response rate um, for different reasons, as we all know. Uh, but this survey actually showed an interesting, um, interesting differences between these courses. Um, CL uh, 106 for social sciences and humanities, and we have CL um, 341 for engineering students, as well as business communication, which is CL 108. Um, for CL 106 and 341, you can see that um, we have interesting questions that we, we thought would distinguish these students, and one of them being um, their, whether their parents attended university or not. So we, we, we found that uh, uh, students taking uh, engineering communication skills um, had their parents, um, their parents attended uh, university uh, studies or a university in general. And with CL 106, many uh, students reported that their parents did not attend uh, university studies. Um, engineering students taking triple one attended, most of them attended English medium compared to those who took 106, uh, who indicated that they attended Swahili medium. And we have very few of them who attended both and um, less attended international uh, school. Now, given these differences between these two groups, I mean, three groups, we found that there are some interesting uh, aspects uh, in, in this group taking CL triple one. Um, uh, now let's give you a rough picture of the cause itself before we get to the findings of our uh, investigation. Um, first, this cause is compulsory for students taking engineering studies. Um, there are 45 contact hours for this cause in which um, there are two lecture hours and one seminar a week. Um, there are about 1,000 students. Um, it's a large group, but there are they are grouped into small uh, groups for seminar presentations uh, in which you have roughly 50 students each. Um, in the past, uh, this course included some grammar um, topics to help students with grammar, English grammar. And um, in the 1990s, there was an additional intensive grammar uh, program for those who scored lot below 50% in the screening test. So they had their screening test, and this was particularly for mature students who have been working somewhere later during the university. Um, the course curriculum um, targets to familiarize students with knowledge and study skills necessary for technical communication, communication engineering. And in this course, there are topics that touch the nature of technical communication, effective listening and non technical skills, reading skills, academic and technical writing, uh, as well as public and presentation skills. Um, to give the uh, actual context of the course, instructors use exemplars from um, engineering books and materials just to um, help students use um, different writing texts in, in their field. Assessment is done through a continuous assi assessment or assignments that carry 40% and the final university examination that carry 60%. Um, so students complete a minimum of one seminar presentation and two written assignments. So now with our focus on this course in particular, um, we will present um, the baseline that we undertook. 
So in July 2022, we had a baseline interview that focused on these students, but also instructors. Um, and we, this data will be triangulated with baseline student survey data for one course, uh, a debrief focus group uh, discussion for CL triple one instructors. Uh, and this year also we collected writing samples from these um, students. We have five of them that we are tracking, uh, but also we will have four survey data uh, to analyze and interviews with their instructors, engineering instructors. Okay, so um, the focus to, for, on this course will help us to better understand the course and its stakeholders so that we can measure transfer more accurately, whether it's happening or not, identify obstacles to transfer more effectively, identify potential challenges and or opportunities for transfer in later years, and maybe recommend for pedagogical strategies to improve likelihood of transfer. Okay, in the interviews um, in which we interviewed four um, CL triple one instructors, the interviews were semi-structured with a focus on pedagogy, um, the nature of students, the cause, the relationship between the cause and the rest of the university, um, and transfer skills and writing transfer. So we had four instructors, sorry, and all participated. The interviews were conducted in July 2022 before the semester starts. And the, the interviews were conducted by Taylor uh, for technical reasons, of course. Uh, one interview could last for one hour and instructors were given travel allowance. Okay, interviews with students, uh, they were as well semi-structured with a focus on student perception on their own skills uh, and knowledge. Um, uh, but also how they view the course themselves uh, and whether there are some skills that they transfer to other courses and the institutional context more broadly. Uh, we had five students and all of them participated and this interview were, interviews were conducted recently, most recently, July 23 after um, classes ended, uh, but before the final exams. And they were also conducted by Taylor. They lasted, each last for one hour. And these students were are compensated for their time for over five years. So I welcome Taylor. Thanks, Michael. <clears throat> so I'm gonna share with you some of the findings, the preliminary findings from these interviews. And I should add before beginning that we've done a very detailed analysis of the instructor interviews that were conducted a year ago, but we just finished the student interviews um, last week, in fact. So we haven't had a chance to analyze that data in great detail, but we did upon looking at um, the um, audio transcripts to identify some uh, interesting points of similarity and contrast between what the instructors were saying and what the students were saying. So we've uh, juxtaposed them in columns here so you can see the themes that are emerging through a kind of deductive analysis. So on the left-hand column, you see the instructor's perceptions of incoming CLL student or CL triple one students. We can contrast that quite nicely with the student's perception of their own incoming skills and knowledge. The instructor's perception of how others see the course, we are contrasting with students' perceptions of that course. Instructor's perceptions of writing and skills transfer more broadly at a kind of theoretical level, contrasting that with students' perceptions of their own experiences, whether they are in fact transferring skills according to their own um, understanding. And then we've got a fourth theme in each column, which don't correlate with each other, but they're uh, quite important and necessary to share nonetheless and that is instructors' perceptions of the curriculum and students' sense of self-efficacy, which for those of us in the world of writing studies, uh, we know that students' sense of self-efficacy in writing is the single largest predictor of a positive outcome in that area. So let's go into the findings. Um, instructors believed when asked that their students who were in the engineering course and uh, communication for engineering students course 
those students were from English medium primary schools. The students, however, that we're tracking were from a mix. Two were from English medium, two were from Swahili medium, and one was, had had both. Instructors perceived that their students were quite strong compared to other students in other CL courses, and the students agreed. They, they themselves were strong students, saw themselves as strong students, and more or less understood their peers to be strong. Uh, instructors believed that even though these are strong students, many did not have the necessary skills to be successful, and our students disagreed with that. They said, yes, we have the necessary skills to be successful. So we've highlighted and read there some of the interesting points of uh, contrast. Still with perceptions of the course, instructors and students agreed that the classes were far too big, classes of 1,500 gathering at one time and even relatively large seminar uh, sections. Instructors and students agreed um, that this resulted in a lack of hands-on practice that is essential uh, for the development of these kinds of skills. Um, instructors were unanimous in this point, uh, students were more split. Third point down, uh, half the instructors said that there was an unnecessarily high failure rate in the classes because of insufficient resources or instructors. Uh, students, on the other hand, said that they learned important skills and knowledge and uh, didn't acknowledge uh, high failure rates and that wasn't a concern for them. And finally, um, instructors thought that UDSM did see the importance of the course but nonetheless didn't invest sufficient resources. And the students, they just said, the course is working, it's working fine for them. Mm. Still on perceptions of the course, um, broad agreement on this slide. Half the instructors said the course should be mandatory. Um, all the students, on the other hand, said the course should be mandatory. Even if uh, they weren't particularly uh, fond of it, they said, yes, it's necessary, it should be mandatory. Some of the instructors argued that the course was important because it teaches skills that students didn't learn in high school. Um, some students um, said a similar point, but they didn't say they hadn't learned the skills in high school. They simply said they had more to learn. There's always more to learn. And so they thought the course was important for that reason. Finally, students uh, or instructors said that um, the course was necessary because students' language skills were impacted by Swahili instruction in high school. And the students sort of agreed with that and admitted that there was code switching and some time dedicated to Swahili in the classroom um, and didn't really get into the details of what impact that might have on their learning before university. Final slide on perceptions of the course. Instructors um, said that categorically, all of them said students don't like this course. They don't value the course. The students that were tracking, however, all five of them said they did like the course, they did value the course, although some acknowledged that some of their friends weren't quite as enthusiastic as they were. <clears throat> Second point, some instructors say that, uh, said that uh, the students were afraid of the course, that there's a reputation that's very difficult and people are going to fail. None of the students admitted this or acknowledged that this was a concern. Third point, some instructors said that students uh, may not like it now, but they'll come to appreciate it later. And all, stu all the students said that um, they appreciate it now and will continue to in the future. And finally, the instructor said that many of their colleagues don't take the course seriously. And some students agreed that many of their instructors didn't take communication skills seriously. It wasn't a priority for their instructors in the course. By far, the most important finding, however, is this one. Mm -hmm the perception that instructors and students have of writing or skills transfer generally. All four instructors believe that students do not transfer the skills from the course that they're teaching uh, and the knowledge from the course that they're teaching to other contexts. And all five of our students enthusiastically stated that they already were transferring skills from this course. They were already transferring knowledge from this course to other contexts, courses they, or, uh, courses they took in the second semester. Um, some instructors said, yeah, some students might transfer skills, but that's only because they already had them in high school. And the students, on the other hand, um, argued that <clears throat> they uh, were transferring skills sorry, <clears throat> uh, to and from other contexts. <clears throat> and the specific skills that they, we, we asked them about were the core skills that are taught in the course, which are presentation skills, note-taking skills, reading skills, and writing skills. 
And you can see uh, a quotation at the bottom of the screen from an instructor and the one from the student that make the contrast quite startlingly apparent. Mm -hmm. There, were, there are some complicating factors that some of you may have already uh, picked up on, and that is that um, our students have self-selected to be in this uh, st study. And so two of the four instructors that I interviewed um, quite wisely were concerned that only good students would participate in this part of the data collection. And so our results would incorrectly suggest that transfer is occurring. And you can see some quotes there that suggest that. Mm. Um, and I think we should uh, acknowledge, and we've looked at the students' uh, transcripts, their grades. These are strong students. These are good students, um, perhaps amongst the strongest in the class. And so we must take that into consideration um, when we consider the question of writing and skills transfer. But we have many other data sources that we'll be able to use to uh, uh, triangulate with the interview data. So we're not too concerned at this point, but we need to keep an eye out for it. And then one of our instructors also argued further down the screen there that skills transfer isn't an issue because language is the issue here. Um, and that the question of skills transfer comes after the question of language. And so we need to be focused primarily on that. Another factor that we will certainly take into consideration. The fourth and final theme uh, in our data is uh, instruct instructors' perceptions of the curriculum. Remember, this is not aligned with anything specific with the students. Um, three of the instructors said the current curriculum was fine. It addressed the students' needs. One thought a more discipline-specific uh, approach would be uh, valuable, focusing on different uh, kinds of engineering, different colleges within engineering. Um, all of the instructors thought that the curriculum suffered not because of the curriculum, but because of the context within which it was delivered. That is to say, the classrooms and the resources they have lack of a language lab, large classes, insufficient instructors, et cetera. All the instructors agreed that they uh, needed to improve collaborations with engineering in order to ensure that the curriculum was appropriate. And one pointed out that this can't be impossible because it used to be done um, a number of years ago. And something that's of um, great importance and uh, interest to Michael and I is this last point which is students' perception of their own self-efficacy. I mentioned in passing earlier that self-efficacy is a strong predictor of students' uh, success with regards to writing. Um, all of the students said, and again, with quite a, a surprising degree of uh, enthusiasm, that their self-confidence had improved or that it had improved a lot uh, over the course of taking CL111. Um, asked individually about different skills, they all said, without exception, that they had strong self-efficacy uh, because of the course in their presentation skills, note-taking skills, reading skills, and writing skills. Of course, students often don't know what they don't know, um, so we will uh, analyze the writing to confirm or contradict this finding, but on the surface, it is a, a significant one. And this uh, sense of self-confidence, uh, um, students felt that this was going to impact them in the future as well. They felt more confident about their future studies because of their experience in the course. Um, and finally, in spite of this, most students said that they would like another course like this, perhaps later on in their engineering degree, um, to help them not forget what they've learned and to reinforce it in a more discipline specific way. Thank you. So now let's see what we have learned so far in this study. Uh, first of all, instructors and students uh, disagree on the fundamental issues that we have seen, um, Taylor just presented, on issues concerning writing and skills transfer. And then second, analysis of students writing samples and interviews with engineering instructors will try to clarify this disagreement. Um, and the next one, the next lesson is more work need to be done to assess all incoming students' writing skills and this will allow for differentiated and targeted instruction um, here in, in, in the courses offered at the university. Um, another one is the significant, um, there are significant obstacles to writing transfer um, that we have seen, and these include lack of alignment with other engineering courses, and this was evident through uh, instructor's interview, um, stakeholders' perception of the course, and here we are referring to engineering students and instructors, 
but also resources um, that would allow hands on practice, practices in the classes and authentic opportunities for writing. Uh, but also curriculum seems to be appropriate at this stage at least, uh, but reviewers and interviews with engineering instructors will help us reveal more about this. Um, so it's evident that we need more opportunities for students to practice um, in classes uh, with more interaction with instructors. Um, and this is something we have to uh, investigate more. Um, students would welcome teaching um, that focus on transfer and more opportunities to apply communication skills in engineering um, courses. Let's see what we have to do in the future. Um, it, in the future, we will have interviews with engineering instructors um, and analysis of data in light of current findings. And in those activities, we focus on alignment, opportunities for transfer, uh, queuing for transfer, assessment uh, practices, among others. We'll also discuss um, collaboration between the units, uh, Engineering and Communication Studies uh, Center, uh, on matters regarding scheduling, the teaching, messaging, as well as assignment instructions. Another activity is analysis of interview data from these students that we whom we've have we interviewed recently, um, and analysis of their writing that we have collected. Uh, in the processes, we also focus on writing samples, assignment instructions uh, provided by the instructors, and opportunities uh, for transfer. Uh, we also um, plan to have exploratory discussions with the senior management in the engineering college um, concerning curriculum and coordination, of course, depending on the rest of the results. Additionally, we'll have exploratory discussions with CL instructors um, to revise the course, probably, depending on the results, and teach for transfer. Uh, other discussions will involve the U University of Dar es Salaam management um, and engineering management regarding core curriculum support, and here we are referring to writing center programming, uh, writing across curriculum programming, as well as English language instruction. Um, in the new academic year, uh, this November, we plan to run a paper survey um, in order to ensure um, high response rate uh, with a writing exercise uh, to demonstrate we can identify different kinds of students for future research. What follows is a list of our references Thank you for listening. It's now time for discussion, questions, and comments. Thank you very much for your presentation. We can now begin the question and answer section. The question and answer section will be opened to voice questions as well as written questions. If you would like to ask a question, just raise your hand in the nonverbal controls present underneath the participant panel, and I will send you a request to unmute. If you prefer to ask a written question, that is also still possible. You can do so using the Zoom chat module, and as usual, I will read out the question. Please remember that the webinars are recorded so that if you ask a question, this will be part of the recording and will be released on the YouTube channel. Thank you, this is really interesting to me. Um, so one of the things that I think is interesting about this is that you are focused on a particular field because writing is so different in different fields. So I wondered if you could elaborate about, I think one of the instructors mentioned something about um, even within engineering that they felt that the course wasn't tailored enough. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think uh, with preliminary data, it suggests that um, there is a lot to learn uh, between the instructors uh, because there, there should be a coordination um, uh, between these colleges. It seems that even in curriculum design, uh, there's no enough coordination to see how to help engineering uh, instructors design writing assignments that would really uh, enhance um, transport skills and writing. Um, so it's something that we are looking for to engage with these two units to try to come together and you know, um, ensure that um, what we think that students should uh, learn from these courses is actually happening. I worked um, for a year at the, at the University of Johannesburg and worked with the um, Engineering Writing Center there. And they have a specific um, set of instructors who work with the engineering students and other engineering faculty to do what uh, CL111 is doing. 
but some of those instructors also will work with upper level courses in specific um, subfields of engineering. And they do that so that they can impress upon the students the importance of communication by speaking to their very unique and specialized assignments using the language that's unique to those assignments. Um, but uh, the foundational year to ensure that everyone has a certain baseline of skills is pretty generic across the university. Uh, and so a lot of that discipline specific instruction and support will happen at uh, upper levels. Um, so it's, it's both, it's both a need for the general and a need for the, the very specific. Anna? Um, yeah, thank you for the presentation. It's really interesting. I just have a curiosity, like, uh, I don't know anything about engineering. So I was just wondering what kind of examination is quite common in these type of courses, like which of the skills are they applying? Is it uh, oral presentation or examination? Or is it written assignments where they are examined on? Like, what do they practice in the first year in the other courses as well? Um, the nature of uh, assignments um, in, in engineering courses, um, the majority of the courses actually have written assignments. So these students can have projects that they have to write in this program, uh, but also um, some other kind of writing that they have to do. Um, the question uh, to uh, do some measurement, for example, and write a report. Uh, but also we noted that uh, they have less uh, essay. But we all know um, the, the nature of engineers study. Uh, but nevertheless, we have courses, um, university wide courses, for example, uh, development studies, in which they are trained about um, development in general and different topics. Now, this course uh, requires them to write essays. So um, they, they have limited assignments um, to write, of course, but then we, we still have to investigate in those few assignments that they write whether there is any writing transfer or skills transfer that is happening. So I was wondering whether you conducted, I assume based on the quotes that the interviews were conducted in English? Yeah, oh yes. Okay, um, just thinking about my own knowledge of sort of Tanzanian high school students and so they would become the first year university students to some of them the sheer fact of having to talk to someone in English seems like it could be um, something that would put them off. So I guess I wondered whether you considered doing interviews in Swahili and what um, what effect you thought uh, the choice of language would have on your results. Yeah, um, I certainly had the same fear. Um, I was concerned and worked fairly hard, I think, to uh, put the students at ease and joke with them, et cetera. Um, and I'm fairly confident that I got really good, honest, detailed information from the students in the course of doing the interview. So I'm not worried about the results. Um, it certainly crossed our mind when we were thinking about the research uh, about the language um, for instruction, uh, language for data collection. But I was, I worry that it would undermine the university's efforts to promote English as a medium of instruction if we thought that we needed to collect the data in Swahili. There's a real push to legitimize English and promote English in the university. That's why it's the official language of instruction. So I think that the, the project would have contradicted uh, some of uh, mm. policies, I guess, um, mm. at the university. And that wouldn't be the optics that we were looking from from other stakeholders who we need to have on board. So we have a memorandum of understanding between the university. I have a, a research uh, associateship here at the university. And uh, so we want to make sure that we're operating in lockstep with the official uh, policies of that institution. Yeah, yes. Um, maybe something to add. Um, I, I just wanted to point out um, some little differences between the students because we, we had five students who are taking engineering studies and five who are taking humanities and social sciences. So given the fact that um, most of the, I mean, some engineering students, of course, instructors believe that most of them come from English medium schools, but it's not the case. We found that some come from Swahili um, primary uh, schools. Uh, but students who are taking engineering courses are really good um, at English. You know, the English competence is really impressive. 
compared to those who take uh, humanities and, and social sciences. And this um, um, touches um, the question that we included in the surveys. Um, uh, for example, if their parents went to university, because we know that um, they contributed in a way, they, are, they have the means to take their students to English medium schools, and that collectively will improve their competence when they come to universities. So it was evident in a way um, that you know, language competence also improves uh, um, participation uh, of these students during interviews. The students were really quite excited to be participating in the research as well. And so this is a wonderful learning opportunity for them, um, for the learning that will almost certainly, um, they'll take with them to other contexts and uh, will inspire them to explore new things. So for the student benefit as well, I think it was useful to conduct the research in English. Bonnie? Hi, thanks for your talk. Uh, I've also found that engineering students tend to have really good writing skills across the board compared to other students, just sort of generally. Uh, my question though is uh, your findings, do you think, uh, how will the administration react to your findings? Or do you think that if they feel that they are doing a good job of serving the best students, that they're doing all right, or is their goal to serve sort of weaker students or, you know, I mean, I, I, I yeah, <laughs> I mean, take that question where you will, but where, where, where do you think the administration will go with your findings? We, we had, we had a version of this very conversation earlier today. Uh, it's interesting that you bring it up. Um, and it's kind of concerning um, that, I mean, and we know, I know from my Canadian context that yes, large classrooms and minimal contact with instructors won't affect the stronger students. Um, but is that the students, are those the students that we want to gear our educational system towards? Um, probably not. And I would certainly say definitely not. Uh, we want to support uh, all of the students, uh, particularly those who, who need the support, uh, whose parents didn't go to university, et cetera. So uh, I think I will refrain from answering because we don't have the data from the group of students that we are fairly confident are weaker. Um, so I think it will depend on how they respond to many of these questions um, and the survey uh, data and analyzing their writing. Uh, we just don't know yet because um, we haven't done the deep dive into that data. But uh, in terms of how the university would respond. I think um, um, one of the arguments that we think we will make uh, towards the end of the, this study is that uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, useful to have a screening test uh, during the uh, first two weeks of uh, opening the university to see if um, the little resources we can have, we can use them effectively to help students who are really needy, um, who need these writing skills or language skills. And that's why we talked about uh, writing center, for example, having writing, writing labs, uh, writing clinics uh, and staff who are there to assist the students not only during their first year, but uh, throughout their life uh, in the university, because they will always need assistance. And that's why some students from engineering actually um, hinted that they would love to have another course uh, on communication skills, because they believe that they are not uh, perfect. They will have to learn some more uh, skills to make their writing perfect. So um, there are a number of uh, recommendations or things that we would uh, recommend, or, and, and that's why we are, trying to collect evidence to support what we think will be useful or best use of the um, meager resources. One of the sort of objectives of this research was to, as I said, say, collect data, to make an argument for curricular reform or ancillary services, co-curricular supports, that sort of thing. And um, I think, I don't think anybody would be surprised that such a thing would be a welcome addition to the university, but until you have hard data, demonstrating uh, that it's needed, uh, it's hard to make that argument persuasive to the senior administration. Um, but since we started this research and we started talking about some of the things that uh, we might end up recommending depending on our results, one of them was a writing center. And um, now at the university, there is um, some appetite for that. There's some discussion about, well, maybe a writing center might be a good idea. So even though we haven't finished, we've, we're nowhere near finished, we've hardly begun our research, there's already been a change potentially in, in the culture uh, and um, the, the kinds of things that uh, decision makers are willing to entertain. 
discuss. Nothing, nothing's happened yet, but at least it's it's part of the discussion. I have sort of a general question. Um, so I I studied linguistics as an undergraduate, and I found that the writing center at our college, while helpful in sort of humanities writing subjects, was not especially able to help me with linguistics writing. And so if you do develop end up developing a writing center, how do you make it so that it can help students across such a wide range of disciplines where the writing expectations are so different? Yeah, I was a writing center director for about a decade. And uh, I would I, I, I would disagree with you on, on what you just said in terms of my experience. The science students who had very little interest in writing were most responsive to the writing pedagogy that we employed in the, in the writing center. Um, they were looking for rules they could follow, very clear directions. They weren't interested in the nuance of language and how to make it you know, more effective like the humanities students. And so they were very responsive to very sort of reductive, but clear definition. This is a thesis statement. This is a, you know, what a good paragraph looks like. This is why this transitional expression at the beginning of the paragraph is effective. It links back to your previous argument. Here's how to integrate a quote. Uh, here are templates for how to integrate uh, uh, primary source evidence as paraphrase or as quotation or as summary. Um, and, and it was quite effective. So there are established um, pedagogical strategies for working with different kinds of students um, who have different kinds of assignments and different genres, but also different uh, backgrounds and interests. So I think it would be a fairly uh, simple task to institute the training modules and build capacity for the writing center. Uh, the, tr the more difficult challenge would be finding local people to uh, do the administration of the center. Um, that would not be easy because it's not, there aren't any in Tanzania, right? So, yeah. so this is not a skill set that is uh, local. It would have to be developed uh, with some sort of uh, training and capacity building program from somewhere where there are writing centers and that body of knowledge exists. Yeah, to chime in on what Martha said, I hear the same complaint from linguistic students that they're not getting the help from the writing center. But that's primarily because they're not getting this kind of instruction that you're talking about. They have mm -hmm. often a, only a peer writing tutor, somebody that's looking at what they've written and is helping, you know, edit that. And uh, yeah, I think things are geared more towards a basic kind of uh, English essay rather than you know, more technical. Yeah, sorry, I, I should have clarified. You're, you're absolutely right. There are different models, uh, staffing models for writing centers. And the one, the model I'm talking about, all of our instructors uh, have their PhDs or are very, very close to having a PhD. And they have pretty extensive training in, in actual writing pedagogy. So uh, that's a very different model than the peer tutor model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, a lot of my students were like, we are the peer tutors. We can't <laughs> ask anybody for help at the writing exactly. center because we are the tutor. We are the helpers. So it. Uh... Yeah, so in, in South Africa, most of the writing tutors uh, that I, I met when I was there for a year uh, on a sabbatical, um, they were all postgraduate students who uh, had gone through a lot of training and had most of them had worked for many years supporting their graduate studies. Uh, in the writing center. So there was a, a lot of experience there and therefore the ability to work with the students in linguistics or anywhere else. Yeah. I'm also fascinated by the, the class having the um, spoken language aspect because the writing center seems very divorced from that aspect of communication, you know, and yet people probably do want help on, I'm gonna give a presentation, can you help me with this? And, and do writing centers generally, or ever offer that kind of help? They do. Um, it's you're right though. It's far less common. Um, but I mean, the writing center at the University of Toronto, we do oral presentation skills, note taking skills, time management, study strategies, the whole gamut, right? All those soft skills. Um, but ninety percent of our work is is writing and uh, writing, mostly in the social sciences and sciences. Uh, so it's it's certainly possible, but it's Speaking personally, I was always terrified when somebody asked me for help with their oral presentation. <laughs> I don't <laughs> consider myself to be particularly good in that field myself. So, yeah. Mm. Well, it's something where in high school I, I participated in speech team, and I feel like that 
was such an important uh, professional development aspect that's really under, well, you know, it, it isn't something that I was taught at any other level of education, whether, you know, college or um, graduate degree. And yet it's um, probably one of the most yeah. useful things I've had after learning how to touch type. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to add something that it, um, now that you touched other skills that students really need these skills, we think as writing center, if, um, if, if established, will coexist with the existing center that actually offers these courses um, for, you know, for the entire university. Because in this course, in the communication skills course, they will learn different sorts of skills, including public speaking and the nature of communication in general. So um, the argument would be that the writing center will not substitute the center for communication studies because we we strongly believe that the students still need um, public speaking and presentation skills uh, that is not offered in the writing center. Thank you. I think those are all of the questions and comments for today. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley Bibliography. I would like to thank Michael and Tyler again for their presentation and everyone else for participating today. And I hope to see you again at our next webinar on Wednesday, the 26th of July by Andrew Harvey.